G'day viewers, my name is Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists do what they do. Well, hi folks, and welcome back to Colour in Your Life. Well, we are at the bottom of the South Island in New Zealand at a little town, or just outside a little town, called Awaka, um, which is Maori for canoe, is that correct? The place of the canoe. The place of the canoe. And I'm with the lovely lady, Lindley Van Alphen. Welcome Hello. to the show, Lindley. Thank you. Fantastic to be here. This is a wonderful area. Um, we are going to be obviously painting this scene behind us today, which is a, a beautiful scene. And uh, Lindley is a lady that, um, sort of took a, took a journey in a sense because of your husband. Isn't that correct as far as your art is concerned? Yes, my, my husband passed away three and a half years ago now from motor neuron disease and he told me when he went I had to follow my art dream. So I'm just being the good wife. <laughs> just just mm. doing what he asked her to do. Yes. But you've actually opened up a gallery in a walker as well. Yes. And you've got a studio in there so that people that are passing through. I mean generally it's pretty quiet down here but you say at the summertime there's just literally people come from everywhere because it is such a beautiful place. Yes. I, I open on Labour weekend which is the end of October right through to Easter. Okay. Every weekend. So Raymond really left you a great legacy. Even though it's sad that he's gone, he actually gave me the gift of my life. You know, women are always compromising, and, and I'm not being horrible towards men, but we, we're always compromising for our children, our husbands, and, and our jobs. Yeah. And then suddenly, I was free to follow what I passionately wanted to do. And really encouraged you in the process as well. Yes. That's yeah. great, but you're pursuing yeah. something that you love, and uh, that's yeah. extremely important. So, yeah. but I'm gonna step out of shot, and as you can see, we are in an absolutely beautiful place. I mean, uh, New Zealand really is a glorious place to be. And I'm going to let Lindley take you guys through the process of how she puts a plein air piece together in oils. And I'll get to the side, so let's make a start. Right, let's do that. Okay, Lindley, well I can see that you've got a board there and we were just talking about that before we started. So what have you done with that board? What type, what type of board is it? It's just Builders MDF, which I have sealed with a house sealer paint, um, undercoat, and gessoed the side I'm going to paint on, sanded it off, gessoed again, and that's it. Brilliant. Cut it to A4 size, so yeah. it fits a standard frame ready to go and you've got basically everything packed up in your vehicle. Anything that you need is just a hands, hands set of away. Yes, this is actually a box that my husband made me so it's a bit special. <laughs> oh, that's great. So, <laughs> all right, so we're going to do an oil painting today. And So what is this place called again that we're looking at? We are looking at False Isle. False Isle. Yeah, and Surat Bay. Okay, it's a beautiful, beautiful place, my goodness. Mm. All right, so we've got Windsor Newton paints. Yes. Um, you don't use too many colours, is that correct? I followed John Crump, who Crump. was one of your people, yep. and I use mostly his colours, but I even use less um, a lot of the time. So. Yeah. Hmm. So, all right, well, let's make a let's make a start. Right. I've I've been looking at the scene, and I think that I'll just try and stick to ultramarine blue, cadmium orange. Uh, Cadmium yellow pale, titanium white. Plenty of white. And I might just stick with that at the moment. Okay. We, I've got others in there, but. Oh, and transparent gold ochre. Oh, okay, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's quite, even though it's bright, it's actually quite grey, if that makes sense. Yeah. Everything looks sort of bluey grey, so. Yep, so I just start with 
sketching with my a bit of liquid on my brush. Bit of blue. Fairly thin. And probably just slightly above mid centre for the horizon. And just roughly sketch in where I want to put the, the shape of the hills and things. So you were mentioning John Crump before, but you've, you've actually um, gone and done workshops with a number of influential artists over the years. I mean, even going to Australia to, to meet up with people as well. Ben Ho, which is one of our well-known New Zealand artists. John Crump, um, Wayne Edgerton is actually a, an artist down Southland who, who taught my son and he actually introduced me to oils. Um, and I've followed others online and I've bought numerous books. <laughs> um, Richard Smith, um, Tony Smybert. That's one of the things, apart from painting, you just love reading and learning about art too. Yes, I have quite a lot of art books and magazines. I subscribe to the Plain Air magazine and the Southwest Art. Yeah, I have a shout out to Mr Eric Rhodes who's the publisher of Plain Air magazine. I think that's really great, <laughs> a great magazine and I recommend anyone who paints Plain Air should buy it because it's just great. It's fantastic and, and he'd, he'd yeah. love to hear that too, yeah. <laughs> I can assure you. I, I found it when I was on a trip in Aussie and the first thing I did when I got home was order it online. So I shall order it every year, right. religiously. Right, so I've got this bigger brush, which I'm going to swap because I've got that dirty. Yeah. And I'm just going to do my sky and work my way down it, really. Okay. I put liquid on the brush before I touch any paint. That is the thing John Crump taught me. So there you go. Yeah. And I just use quite big strokes. Yes, yeah, so I find that uh, particularly with plain air painting is that sometimes the bigger the brush the better the picture. One of the things I learnt in, in um, the Ben Ho class yeah. was big brush, big brush around the outside and little brush where you want your you know, at the very end. Yes. So this is just ultramarine and a bit of white. Very limited palette by any means. That's a great thing to do anyway because people, you can see sometimes they've got 25 colours out and they just don't know where their palette's going at all. If I put 25 colours out I make beautiful mud. Yeah, pretty much. That's what it turns out to be. And I just had wildlife land on it. You can hear the birds in the background and the bellbirds and lovely it really is so when did you when did you make the decision the conscious decision to say I'm going to get a building and a walker and turn it into an art gallery I didn't really I wanted a house that opened to the road that people could come and see me in my space but I needed space to hang my artwork and I thought, well, why not open the doors and let other people enjoy it as well? Good idea. And, um, yeah, that's, that's probably a year. It, I've been there a year and a half. Right, so that's um, the sky done, really. I'll probably come over it later. So I'm going to work down now to the sea, which to me looks also almost a grey-green. We've got a great area around here to do seascapes and landscapes. And uh, we've got Cannibal Bay that's just on the other side. It's yeah. nice to go there when the sun is just coming up. Yeah, and then on the other side of us, on the, on the southern side, we've got Jack's Bay. It's a lovely beach. It's very easily accessible to people who aren't so good at walking to Surat Bay or even Cannibal Bay. It, it goes down a windy road to get to Cannibal Bay, but Jack's Bay is a good road. You park right at the beach and you can walk out and it's just beautiful. And you may see sea lions, birds, and there's a whole lot of wee cribs and holiday homes around that uh -huh. um, if you're an artist, go paint. Great place to be. I thought I've heard hmm. you had ele elephant seals down there as well. I have not seen any, but the sea lions are quite, they're quite good. Uh -huh. yeah. I'm just gonna mix orange and blue. Yeah, it's actually surprising how limited your palette is and you're still getting all the 
all the colours that you need. Yep, blue, orange, yellow ochre. That's it, gold ochre actually. You don't need much more than that. And sometimes it's even too much. I'm trying to put the darks in, which I've just made a mess of. So I'm just going to scrape that off. So you can always... Fix. Yeah, you can always fix. Well, that's the beauty about oils in comparison to, say, watercolours. It's like oh. they can be pretty unforgiving. <laughs> no, you just got to remember that watercolour is like a floodplain. It's just sediment settling into the hollows. Yeah. So I'm actually just putting a bit of a base underneath here, okay. scrubbing it on. Well, you've done a, a lot of paintings around the Caitlin's area. And you've got one called Purakanui Bay, which is a pretty outstanding piece. That's south of where we are. Yeah. Uh, that has a, a dock camp that a lot of people go and camp there over summer. Yeah, pretty area. And then uh, the Otago Rail Trail. Now, that was forest. a series I did when my husband was ill and he was still able to bike so we used to shoot up to central Otago, we used to live at Tapanui we used to shoot up to central Otago and do the rail trail just a bit at a time like 10 k's up and 10 k's back and yeah. while he was able to do it so we completed nearly the whole rail trail it's quite dull like the colours are quite dull and it was a challenge for me to come home and, and to make something interesting out of what was really quite flat well, but, yeah, but many, many years ago, as a child, I actually rode the ra on the railway line in the rail car. We used to live at Ranfurly and, and I went to school in Alexandra, which is down the road, and I went on the original rail car, so beautiful. it still meant stuff to me, and it's yeah. a beautiful part of New Zealand. I've actually added a little bit of permanent rose, because yeah. I want to make a bit of a purple, a lilac-y purple colour just to add into the water to add it a bit of life. And I mean the beauty about plan air is you can come out here with a A4 board. You could probably do two or three or four of these in a day if you wanted to. And I have done that before too. Yes. Just the sheer enjoyment of being outside in a beautiful place. I used to really love the outdoors when I was younger and fitter, but as I've got older it's become harder to do the tramping and stuff, so I do this instead, which gives me my dose of... The outdoors. Yeah. In the front, these rocks have been um, exposed a bit, so yep. I'm just sort of putting them in a little bit. See the reflection off that water down there? But apart from the oils, you actually work in watercolours as well, and you've got a Catlin series that you've done. Over the winter, I was lucky enough to go see Tony Smybert in Tasmania, and he is someone whose work I've admired for a very long time. And so I've come home and sort of used his style a wee bit where he just lets it, well it just seems to flow and he uses quite strong colours. And another lady I follow quite a lot is an English lady called Jean Haynes, who many of the viewers may have heard of. She talks about letting the watercolour find the essence of whatever you're painting and, and I try now not to paint a picture so much as it is, but just to let the colours run and just move it a bit. and. Yeah. See what happens. Like you said it beforehand, it was a lot, like a la layers of sediment yes. <laughs> settling in. That is something that Tony Smybert said in his videos many, yeah. many years ago on the video that I have of his. Layers of sediment settling in. Yeah. But it is, it's like a floodplain where, where it all just goes. So we've got bits of green out there, that green sort of seaweedy stuff. So you were saying that you put a little bit of um, pallet knife in there as well? Yes, yeah, so I'll just get through it a bit more yet and then I'll just knife it at the end. I go by the motto, less is more. That's, that's good. I mean, if you look at John's work, John Crump. Yes. I mean, the broad strokes are so broad sometimes you can literally just scooping the paint off the, off the pallet. Well, one of the fault of palette knife work I guess is your painting can look busy because it's got a lot of texture mm -hmm. so I've actually found myself sometimes scraping lots of it off and it actually looks better believe it or not okay um, because you don't actually want all this texture it's, it makes it look busy you, you need some restful spots in your in your artwork so yeah Okay, Lindley, well, since you've bought the gallery, you've also 
made available in your place and across the road, uh, a and b for artists to come and stay. And you also take people out on small workshops in this beautiful place so that they can experience uh, your ability and also the, the beauty of the area. Uh, I think that's um, fantastic. And uh, a lot of people out there that have got a bucket list. This is one of those ones when you come right to the bottom of the South Island of New Zealand and catch up with Lindley and then spend some time with her. I think that's a great, great idea. I met a lot of people last year, the first year that I was open my shop. And there's a lot of people who are artists, but they, and if they're anything like me, before I had the courage to do this on my own, I, I wouldn't do it. So I would welcome people to come and come out and paint with me in the, in, in the day. And, um, you know, hopefully we'll get fine weather that we can do this because down here we don't have good weather all the time. <laughs> yeah, well, we had some today. But if they want to come in and see you, they can go to artinthecatlands.com. Uh, yes. It's got all your information in there and people can catch up with you there and um, look at your beautiful work and then, you know, basically say, well, what do you do and how do I get there? That's correct. Yeah. We can, they can do that. Um, there is a map on the website that will show you exactly where I am. Right down the bottom. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> Not Same quite. latitude pretty... <laughs> as Invercargill. You're pretty close to it. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> I bet. It's still a beautiful place. Yes, it, it is. It's, I, I went up the west coast um, not so long ago and I used to live up there and I used to think that was the most beautiful place in New Zealand. But as I drove up, I thought this is very masculine, very masculine sort of, sort of countryside. But down here in the Catlins, I feel it's very feminine and very welcoming and, and it, it sort of looks after people who need looking after their souls because it's just fantastic really it just gives one peace well, it's great. given me peace anyway absolutely so. but yeah it is it is very feminine our country with the rolling rolling hills and up the valley there's even mountains that have nipples so <laughs> there you go, <laughs> <There> you go. <laughs> Well, I shouldn't call them mountains, hills. <laughs> hills. <laughs> hmm. So I'm just about finished with the undercoating. Just going to tidy up my sky a little. Okay. Then I shall whip out my palette knife. But it's a fun, it's a fun thing to do. Yeah. yeah I suppose that's the thing with plain air that you've got to have the weather. I met Brent Trelay on the coast and he told me him and his wife were out painting somewhere and Grace was holding the easel as he painted. It was that windy. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'm now going to attack with my palette knife. Palette knife, here we come. Now I'm going to mix some ultramarine and orange because in the front here we've just got some little bushes. Yes. I'm just going to do them quite dark and roughly with my palette knife. Well, it sort of tends to centralise the picture. Just to give it a bit of foreground really. Yeah. So how, how often would you come out to, to paint plein air? I try at least once a week and in the summer I quite often shoot out in the evening or first thing in the morning but mm -hmm. Right, let's have a look at this. So, we'll just stick one here a bit randomly. They really are quite odd looking bushes, aren't they? Yeah, they're... I don't know what they are. Some native. I'm just really just giving a bit of life to it, really. So, when I do grasses, I actually use my knife on the side and turn it and just really let the paint come off where it wants. Yeah, it just gives a bit of texture. Yeah. And even when it scrapes the paint off, I don't really care because it just sort of adds life. And you've also got some pretty impressive red deer paintings of stags that you've done. And you have real close-up uh, close information because you used to breed them. Yes, um, 
After we sold our dairy farm, we decided we'd do deer. My husband used to be a bit of a hunter and we'd actually caught some wild deer and then, then we bought some quite expensive red deer and started to breed them. I, I guess that's where the paintings for them come from because mm. they're, they're quite special animals. I, I had an exhibition a few years ago with the paintings. Yeah. Um, but, but even though they've been domesticated, they're still, to me, they've still got that proud arrogance of being just wild. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, yeah, and I tried to put that into my paintings and, yeah, they're special animals. Yeah, they're pretty impressive looking beasts, there's no two ways about it. The thing to do when you're plain earring is to stop sooner rather than later. Yeah. Well, you've definitely captured the mood out there, there's no two ways about it. Looks great. Yeah. Looks beautiful. When I did the rail trail pictures, I actually painted the base painting with acrylic and then I just palette knifed all the oil over. Um, and quite thick. So that is finished. My hands are just perfectly dirty. I'm a very messy painter. Get your wet wipes out? Yes, wet wipes, my favourite, most essential tool. <laughs> That's fantastic. And a lady in Australia told me a secret. She said, put baby oil on your hands. And on say. the occasions that I remember, yes, it does work. It just stops the paint from sticking to your skin. Yes, I have some here. So there we go. Well, well done. Very, no, I'm very well not done. quite finished. I have oh, to put my signature on it. Okay. <laughs> and I always, I never paint my signature on my plain ears. I use the end of a brush and I scratch my name in. That's a plain air signature. Yep. And while the paint's wet, if you make a mess of it, you can just wipe it off and start yeah. again. Yeah, Beautiful. Done. Very well done, very well done. Okay guys, well it was a great day in Awaka. Lindley, thank, thank you, you so much for having us out at your uh, beautiful mm. place. This is a beautiful area. As you can see, she's really done a great job with this scene out the back here. Um, absolutely fabulous. Now, once again, as I said, um, this is at the bottom of New Zealand, but it still is quite a beautiful place. Uh, and I would suggest that you come down and see Lindley and be part and parcel of what she does in this great area. Now, your website again is artinthecatlands.com. Yes. So you can come along, go to the website and have a look at what she's doing. Uh, lots of interesting stuff in there. And as I said, really, really beautiful place. And as always, come and see us at colonialife.com.au. Uh, subscribe, come in as well and be part of our membership and what we're doing. Facebook and YouTube. And we'd also like to put out a, a big uh, hello and thank you to New Zealand Artists. New Zealand Artists has been great in supporting all of the artists and what Colonial Life does in New Zealand. So thank you very much to New Zealand Artist Magazine as well. But fantastic day. Thank you. Thanks for, thanks for being here. Remember, Good guys, yeah, as we always <laughs> say, remember, you're going to put some colour in your life? Remember, yes. make sure you put some colour in your life. We'll see you again next time. <laughs> Bye now. <laughs>